be the episode where you cussed the most. Let me, let me just put that out there. I haven't had the pleasure of seeing your other episodes, but I'm going to make that bold prediction. Um, I think you're, you're safe in saying that. Yeah. <laughs> now, Joel, what motivated you to do the show, and how did you overcome your fear, the risks involved in completing missions? Well, I wanted to do the show, like I said earlier, because it was uh, so excessively challenging, because uh, of the extreme dis disadvantage that uh, I have in this scenario, and just because it was something that was threatening to me. It was something that was not going to be easy. It was going to be genuine, and because of that, I knew that I had to do it, even though I didn't necessarily want to do it. I had to do it. Um, and it's been, because of that, uh, it's been the most rewarding thing that I could possibly do, and I want to keep doing it as long as I'm vertical. Excellent, excellent. All right. Now, of course, needless to say, you've been all over the world. Um, you fought in some of the most intense and uh, ridiculously insane terrain uh, and situations, which so far has been, well, the most memorable, your most toughest. Uh, it's, as far as doing the series, um, the most difficult episode by far was here in the Philippines, um, without a doubt. Uh, the, the Scout Rangers were one of the most uh, competent and uh, difficult opponents that I faced, and the jungle around Supic was the worst jungle I have ever been in. It was pure misery, and it completely was not what I anticipated. My plan, uh, my plan didn't work in Jungle That Thick, and I kept expecting it to open up, and it never did. <laughs> so it, it, was, it was really, really miserable. We, uh, my camera guy uh, went down. There are some behind-the-scenes uh, right. shots on DiscoveryAsia.com, uh, Discovery Channel Asia, the Discovery Channel Asia website. There's some behind-the-scenes of my cameraman melting down in the jungle and throwing a double fits, um, which was really, really funny. I highly rec recommend you check that out. But... Um, you know, every place had its own challenges, but uh, in some places it was technology, some places it was the men, some places it was the environment, um, but it always was a combination of all three. But it always comes down to the men involved in whatever you ended up going against, and uh, the Scout Rangers were the best. Wow. Guys, we appreciate that. I mean, you have uh, a former Navy SEAL giving accolades as we are one of the best. We really appreciate that. What were some of the challenges you encountered uh, in the jungle, though? Uh, we, what we saw, maybe some behind-the-scenes uh, anecdotes? <laughs> there are plenty. Um, really, there was the uh, uh, just physical difficulty because I was not accustomed to, uh, to the jungle environment um, as far as the heat and humidity goes. Uh, we were there at the beginning of July. It was a typhoon season. We had a Class 2 typhoon come in uh, the night we were out there. Um, Dehydration is always a problem. Uh, heat exhaustion is a problem. There's another video of one of the producers that was with you guys, I think, in the first hour. Uh, he went down with heat exhaustion. and He had to get evacuated out and, and spent a, like a day or two in the hospital. Um, so there's obviously just the physical challenges of that. But then there was the tactical challenges because uh, the thickness of the jungle, ordinarily as, as, uh, as I'm doing escape and evasion, I can move about three times faster than uh, pursuers because of the needs that they have to, the, the requirements of tracking. But in this environment, that was reversed. I was actually breaking trail. Uh, and so it made it very difficult and it put me on the defensive the whole time. I was never able to turn it around and these guys never gave me a chance to. Um, they kept up the pressure and I never was able to buy enough time in order to change my strategy. Uh, I really was just on the run, and uh, you saw how it turned out. Oh, excellent, excellent. Now, let's uh, talk about these guys, of course, the Philippine Scout Rangers. Wha how did you strategize? What was your strategy against them? Of course, you are, uh, like you said, it, not in your terrain. Uh, you knew they were relentless uh, guys. You on screen, you looked like it was a walk in the park for you guys. It was like an air-conditioned environment for you guys. But uh, how did you strategize, strategize against uh, some of our country's best? I strategized? Yes. Them? Yeah. No, you did. You oh, uh, my strategy uh, when I was going into it was to, uh, first thing I, I always want to do is I want to get some distance. I need to 
get some distance between the pursuers and me, uh, then I need to throw in some anti-tracking tricks. I need to throw in some deception so I can buy some time and I can uh, uh, throw in some confusion. And then I'll start throwing in some booby traps. I'll throw in some more trips, tricks. Uh, at the beginning, they don't know where I'm going, and so I'm, I'm much more able to throw in deception. As I get closer to extract, they've figured out where I'm going. And so now, for me to pull any kind of direction change or any kind of tricks, it's probably not going to, going to work as well. So those were my strategies. That's what I was planning on doing. But the jungle was so thick, there was no way I could do that. When I would try to throw any deceptions in, I found out later they figured out every one of them. Uh, so it wasn't, the jungle was too thick for my plan. And, and then towards the end, um, I had to start using the roads <laughs> because, because it was no longer a matter of, it was a matter of speed. I had to get where I was going. You want to stay off roads for obvious reasons. Roads are where people are. But in this case, um, you know, you can always, you can give all kinds of rules, but you've got to be prepared to break all of those rules depending on the situation. And this was one of those situations where it turned all of my strategy upside down and it was a little too much um, for me to uh, adapt to. Uh, I kept expecting the jungle to open up and it never did. Okay. And of course, uh, we do have to keep in mind you had 48 hours before the extraction came, so that also was uh, another major factor. Yes, yeah, so you had to rush and take the roads because that time was being eaten. That, the time constraints are a big yeah. uh, disadvantage in this because ordinarily um, I would want to throw in some deceptions, get a little distance, camouflage myself, and go to ground um, because I'm most vulnerable when I'm moving. But because of distance constraints and the time constraints, I'm forced to move the entire time and never more so than in this uh, scenario. And if I, if they would have made a mistake, and if I could have lost them or bought more time, I think I could have adjusted. But uh, the lieutenant never gave me the chance. Um, they were kept up the pressure the entire time. All right. Now, one uh, one more last question. Uh, regarding your tools, now we, you, you know, we, we saw that you had a backpack full of uh, gadgets and whatnot. What, what exactly are you utilizing in uh, your evasive and, and survival? What are those tools exactly? Well, uh, I, I carry some booby trap making materials. Um, I carry a multi-tool usually. Uh, I carry some blades and I carry some gear that's dependent on the environment. In this case, I, I carried a poncho and, and uh, a, a Gore-Tex rain jacket. But what I always carry, uh, as far as an escape and evasion kit, um, I have uh, two different ways to make fire, two different ways to purify or carry water, and two different ways to snare or capture, acquire food, uh, two different ways to navigate, and two different ways to signal. Uh, so that gives me a redundancy across all of the essentials of survival. Um, but then in this scenario, the, the manhunt scenario, I don't have time to stop and get food. Uh, I don't have time uh, to build a solar still or, or get any kind of water that takes, takes time. Time is my most valuable commodity. So a lot of times I just tough it out. <laughs> like when I drank from that stream. Yeah. Was a, yeah, that, that was not a smart thing to do. Yeah, but so. this, the reason I did that was okay. um, that there were only a few hours left in the hunt. Right. If I was going to get terribly sick, it was going to be after the hunt was over. <laughs> and so instead of waiting for, for the, the, the purification tabs to work, right. I just drank the water, took the risk, uh, and charged right through because I had to weigh escape and a horrible abdominal disease. And I love it. <laughs> I took the risk. I didn't get sick though. <laughs> you calculated when you would have diarrhea. I appreciate yeah, it. That's exactly. awesome. Not, not many tourists can do that. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you so much for those anecdotes. We really appreciate it. And uh, what, what was the behind the scenes uh, website you mentioned? What, where, where should we catch that? Because sometimes that is some of the best stuff. It is about the behind the scenes episode and some of the extra clips I think is the that stuff. It's hilarious because the, the difficulty in filming this was off the charts. It's discoverychannelasia.com. Yeah, discoverychannelasia.com. You can find lots of clips from behind the scenes uh, on all of the episodes. There were behind the scenes lions in South Africa. Uh, there's um, flying fish attacks in Panama. Um, you know, the stuff that had the heat exhaustion in uh, the Philippines. It just never stopped. It was awesome. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much for that. All right, of course, we are joined on the panel by two more gentlemen. 
uh, from, the mil from the military. Uh, in addition to Sir Juni, we have Lieutenant Gerson also joining us. Good, uh, good afternoon, Paul. I know. How was your experience in tracking Joel? Musta. Was it uh, difficult, uh, easy, walk in the park? Uh, for me, it was a challenging uh, experience while tracking Joel because, as we could know, I'm working with the one of the best elite force of the world. So, definitely, I must see to it that I have the confidence in Track and Joel. And for that, for that show, I bring all a lot for me just to track down Joel and give pride to my unit, the Scout Rangers, and also especially, especially the Philippines as well. Excellent. Now, of course, Joel absolutely, absolutely deserves a round of applause. And of course, Joel mentioned the word pride. He's very prideful in representing the Navy SEALs. Well, Pinoy's in our military were just as prideful. So we had to capture you and they did a wonderful job. Well, uh, every country thought that, but not every country was successful. So. Ooh, all right. Well, thank you. We appreciate that. Um, gentlemen, what was the main, your main strategy in capturing Joel? Very simple, simply. Uh, I've just used the SOP of tracking. Okay. Then combat tracking for the for the damage of everybody. It, it is our way of life in the jungle. We we're used to it. We commonly do it in hunting and finding an enemy in the jungle. So tracking in jungle was was our it was easy. Do you want to say easy? It was easy. Say it. Say it. it was easy. <laughs> <laughs> we're trained for that. It was kind of R and R for them, and you know, you were fighting for your life. So nice. Um, what was your main advantage, though, that led to the successful capture? What do you believe? The, the greatest advantage for me is, uh, as I said earlier, the jungle is our backyard, and the best uh, the, the best key factor for this show was I'm bringing the. I'm, I'm just, we're just using only the, the bare tracking skill for this, for this show. So that could be all. You know what, I'd like to point out uh, that the Philippine military uh, used the least amount of assets in capturing uh, Joel. I know that there were some other countries in other uh, episodes that, I mean, went all out, maybe a little bit overkill with uh, their assets in, in, in capturing Joel, or not capturing Joel. You'll have to see, but uh, I'm just so proud to say that the, the Philippine military used the least amount of assets, simply uh, blood, sweat, and tears, tracking them, tracking him, um, and using, you know, simplicity at its finest. So kudos to you gentlemen for doing that. So, uh, well done. Now, I'd like to open the floor to uh, members of our media or anyone else who's very interested in asking questions. I know that we have a lot of questions to ask. Uh, so, please feel free. Um, you could even ask what SPF sunblock Joel uses or what form of uh, uh, mosquito, mosquito repellent. So, those, are, those questions aren't off the charts. So, please, uh, we got one right there already. Go ahead. State your name and, and where, where are you from and uh, your question, please. Karen from the Manila Times. Um, hi. Uh, did you see that part when he's, Jerson uh, is um, in the village and he says, Hanapin mo yung guapo, katulad ko. I mean, I thought, boggy, handsome, like me. Um, I thought that was a really nice touch. And uh, do you do that a lot when you're in the village? And then, um, uh, Joel, if the other uh, forces running after you had the same kind of sense of humor he had, because I thought that was great. No, uh, that's the first word that come, comes out in my mind when I asked uh, the village. <laughs> There's no script, so I can do anything just to make the show better. <laughs> great senses of humor, um, but in a lot of episodes, they weren't laughing. Uh, they, they weren't having a good time. There were some, I, I was actually shot at once. So sometimes there, there, there were not, uh, not senses of humor going on, but uh, there's some funny stuff in every single episode. Um, one of the things that you'll find uh, 
that's characteristic of people in special operations is that there is a very deep black sense of humor uh, because of the conditions that we're used to being in. So some of the jokes that come out of us uh, among ourselves um, aren't fit for mixed company. <laughs> but you'll see some of that in some of the episodes. It's pretty funny stuff. That's exactly some of the elements you would not expect. I mean, uh, I'm sure we can all agree, just from the first episode alone, needless to say, breathtaking moments, a lot of drama, but the comedic uh, uh, aspects of the show uh, was, was gold. Was, and you can't script that, so kudos to you guys. And again, funniest episode also came from the Philippines, so well done, guys. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, please, keep coming.